Hi everyone, I'm Claire, and I'd like to welcome you to this Get Real series, where we're asking the question, why are young people leaving the church? We're gonna explore four reasons and responses to the growing exodus of millennials and Gen Z from the church. Whether you're a young person on the threshold of leaving your faith, or a youth worker or church leader, I hope this short series won't be a cause for panic, but instead offer some honest reflection on how we can equip and retain the next generation, the church of tomorrow. Are you the expected one or should we look for someone else? That's from Luke 7 verse 19. And this is the famous question that John the Baptist sent his followers to ask Jesus. John, the great forerunner, the one who had guts to announce the arrival of Jesus, the one who didn't care what people thought about his fashion sense of camel's hair and a leather belt, or his strange diet of locusts and honey. John the Baptist, whom Jesus considered was the greatest to ever live. This same John the Baptist went on to sit in a prison cell, confined, confused, and questioning. Are you the expected one or should we look for someone else? This question is filled with pain and disappointment. How could John have gone from proclaiming the good news of Jesus to questioning whether the very Jesus he talked about really was the one he should be looking for? But for some of us, this change in John is no mystery. We have known what it's like whether suddenly or over a longer period of time, we have known what it's like to doubt and raise questions to our Christian worldview. Not only do the questions cause pain, but there is also the self-loathing or embarrassment as we wonder how and why we allowed ourselves to trust people in the church, to take seriously the claims of the Bible, or even how we allowed ourselves to believe in God. We have squirmed in the discomfort of a straightforward faith becoming more complex as we move from optimism to cynicism about the faith of our childhood. And such a change can be triggered by many things, but often what underpins this is disillusionment. The filter comes off and Christianity no longer seems like what we first believed. Perhaps in the face of the pandemic, we became disappointed at the notion of a God who could seem to allow so much suffering. Maybe we've been shocked by the news of a Christian leader who failed to live up to the standards they preached or taught. And on top of that, the church did not seem to hold them accountable. Interestingly, according to Barna Research in 2018 on Gen Z, the main findings from the study is that the problem of evil is a major barrier to faith for non-Christian teens, 29%. Other reasons non-believers provide as common barriers to faith include Christians are hypocrites, 23%. In an interview I did with Lisa Fields, do check it out on the Get Real website. She's the founder of the Jude 3 Project, and she says that the number one reason that she has encountered for people uh, beginning to object to Christianity is hypocrisy. Often, Lisa hears people say Christianity is a novel idea, but they haven't seen it practiced. Now, this picture I've painted of a melting pot of hypocrisy, moral failure and disappointment in God might seem very grim, but there is hope. When cracks begin to appear in our faith and disillusionment sets in, this is actually a moment of opportunity, an opportunity to dig more deeply and interrogate our faith. Can it stand up to the scrutiny of our questions? Like John the Baptist, we ask, are you the expected one or should we look for someone else? In her book, Where is God in All the Suffering? Amy or Ewing writes, our human outrage at suffering points us beyond ourselves and prompts us to seek meaning and transcendence. According to the Christian worldview, transcendence is not merely a concept, a path or destination. Transcendence is a person. Jesus, the one who is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. The mere fact that we are uncomfortable with injustices that we witness or experience in our faith, that suggests things should or could 
be better. Perhaps there is a standard for good in the face of all the wrong that we see. And this intuitive sense points us to the moral perfection of Jesus, his life, his sacrificial death, and his hope-filled resurrection. When we find ourselves disillusioned in our faith, we may want to run away from rather than to Jesus. But just like John the Baptist, we can question the transcendent one who became imminent in the person of Jesus.